Hello and welcome to the 529 Enable April 2021 webinar. I'm your host, Paul Curley, Director of 529 and Able Research at ISS Market Intelligence. As it was pointed out yesterday in a meeting, that's the um, that's my uh, name, title, company, but all the social media contacts right there as well. So if you can't find me on social media, let, let me know. And uh, I guess we'll also be trying to start up a clubhouse uh, group soon as well. So more to come. The goal of the webinar is to share and learn best practices, talk about industry trends, and um, generally kind of you know build out that community of different items that are needed to um, you get people excited about 529s and ABLE accounts and try and get all the different parties in the same room together. And of course, you know, together, you know, building out long that long-term growth opportunity for institutions, ad advisors, and, and families as well. But thank you for the support and collaboration. Today's uh, webinar is the 11th in the series. And of course, it's been building since um, in 2000, um, 2020, also uh, 2021. And so this is the 11th webinar. The recordings are available on that link, but also if you go through the different emails we've sent in the past, you can find you know the whole series of, of different webinars that we've done to date. So thank you for the support and, and take a look and hope you enjoy today's webinar as well. And today's webinar really does um, help us lead up to that 529 Conference 2021 that we, we are currently scheduled for uh, to hold on November 2nd to the 4th at the Ritz-Carlton in Orlando, Florida. It'd be great to get everyone uh, together again in person. Um, you know, it's been, <laughs> we after having last year's conference virtual, so it'd be nice to kind of work back towards that in-person event in Florida. The agenda this year is that on Tuesday, November 2nd, we're going to have the 529 Essentials. We're going to have the eight speakers talk about uh, eight different topics for eight hours. So it's, it'll be a full day from nine to five on that proc training and, and best practices. So always been known as the boot camp as well. And on, that, on Wednesday and half of the day on Thursday, we'll be doing the 529 conference. We'll, we'll be talking about different uh, industry trends from a product marketing distribution legislative perspective. Thursday afternoon on November 5th, we'll have the ABLE Summit. So look forward to uh, seeing you there. Re registration coming soon. And for, and for today, we're going to talk about industry announcements. There's a lot going on in the industry since we had that uh, overall industry update. I think it was actually in, in December that we provided a kind of list of different, different uh, industry changes from a pro product marketing distribution perspective. But we'll also talk about different market, uh, market data and research updates. We also did a deep dive in terms of ETFs and 529s. So we'll be uh, walking through that as well. So, so appreciate the... Um, you know, feedback and, uh, and um, communication. We'll be taking live questions and answers throughout. I can actually see the um, uh, Q&A right here. So all the Q&A right here and at regular intervals, I'll, I'll do my best to kind of pause and take a look as well. And, and for that question and answer component as well, there's there's on, on the right bar, there's, there's a little tab. There's the question and answers. You know, please submit the, the questions there. We'll try and take them along the way and, and um, have fun for it as well. We we always as as a side note, we also try to you know engage the the audience here today, and and um you know we do so by by doing the, the live question you know throughout to to make it fun as well. And so we'll we'll start out with a with a poll just to find out the audience who who's here today. What is the relationship to the um to the audience? Reopen. What is your yeah? Q open. <clears throat> so on the, on the right side of the of the bar next to the question and answer, there's a there's there should be something that pop that is available on, on the right in the poll section to do to do a um to do a poll. So um it, it'll be open and I'll give it a moment or two to to have people respond. Let's give it a one more minute. Brennan Hannon says, no poll came up for me. Uh, let me try one more time. I'll, I'll close it. Back to Q, start polling. Uh, let's see if it comes up right now.
Yeah, let's. Yeah. Brennan, do, do you want to type in and see it? <laughs> mention if the, the poll was, was rolling? Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you, Brennan, from uh, College Invest for, for helping me uh, get back on track. And I'll, I'll give it one more minute now. Thank you. I'll just uh, grab a water for a moment. Okay, um, so as of today, there's a uh, 30% in the product provider and distributor category, 22% in the state agency or um, treasury department category, 22% uh, in the broker dealer and 26% other. So great, so we got the, the, the chat box working. So thank you. All right, so you know, for, for today's audience, that definitely seems like it's a good, well-rounded group, you know, whether it be for, for you know, state uh, state agencies, product providers, primary distributors, broker dealer, home offices, and in, in the other categories as well, such as the record keepers, legal re re regulatory agencies, legal and regulatory agencies. So it's great to get the get the full group of uh, 360 um, degree perspective today. So so industry announcements uh, upwards and onwards, um, and I guess while we're, we're we got you chatting away and, and, and thinking about different things and engaging the audience and. Uh, th this is a this is a chart that uh, that intentionally we, uh, it does not have any um, any labels axes or, or or anything. But you know, I was thinking about so much has changed this this year. Um, if you want to type in the box what, what you think this is, I'll I'll, I'll read off some or, or a hand few. But but basically, you know, in, in 2020, 2021, there's there's been a lot of change, tremendous change. Almost every single trend has been has been shifted, has been changed. Um, you know, but this this trend just continues, and the, and the red bars just sort of the you know where where things are um, overall in terms of just just like the, the overall trend. The green bar is is the change from one year to the next. Um, you know, lo and behold, it, it it really is kind of interesting where you know with so much changing, you know, some things just just literally don't change. Um, and so for when we jump to the next screen, what we'll see is that that what it is is that the student loan debt. So obviously there's been so much you know change in 20, 2020, 2021. One thing that just hasn't changed at all is just the upward trend for student loans. And it really is just you know reiterates that the importance of just staying focused, you know, regardless of everything kind of going on and so many different things and so many um, so much things hit, hitting the news, um, you know, that sometimes it's, it's just important to remember at the end of the day, we're, we're planning and saving for the long-term goal of, of saving and paying for college. Um, you know, so it's, it's great to, um, you know, stay focused and, and if, you know, just in terms of that, that, you know, you know, that, that's that sheer importance of just, you know, saving and paying for college, that student loan debt number isn't going away. That, that red bar is just, you know, very, um, you know, just very deliberate, just very, you know, consistent in its increase. So obviously kind of also helps us focus on, on the why of today's presentation. But, you know, from a legislative perspective, there's there's a new bill that's out there that, um, you know, on the 529 side will uh, expand 529 qualified distributions to post-secondary credentials. So we went from college to K through 12 to student loans and, and all these uh, other components. But, um, you know, what's intriguing is that now we're kind of looking at, at the credential programs on the ABLE side, we're looking at, to expand the, the age of onset uh, from 26, year old, uh, 26 years old to um, 46, year old, 46 years old. Together, you know, lo and behold, what's, what's interesting is that, um, you know, obviously this is, this is positive because it is um, an expansion of, of the, you know, capabilities and enhancement of both 529s and ABLE, that it's not um, something that is detracting or taking away from its ability uh, to really help families. So that's, you know, broadly speaking, from the legislative perspective, we have, we have some great news, you know, hitting the wire. And then when we also kind of uh, take a look, one thing that I've been spending a lot of my time on is is analyzing each and every one of the, the 5,394 investment options that, in, that includes the share classes. So one investment option with five share classes would be five in this example. Um, but, you know, for me, I've been analyzing the 5,000 investment options in 529s as of the, the first quarter, and we'll be doing this going forward of, of you know, basically tagging and flagging each and every one of those investment options to is in an active passive or, or blended investment option. 
Um, and then we'll take that 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 chart right there. It, ba it basically comes from our our five two nine field analysis, where we basically stack and grade the um, you know the benchmark the each and every plan by by fees, and, and it's basically a flat average um, you know you know ca calculation. So the bar is the the, is the lowest uh, cost investment option, the top one from a total uh, annual asset based fee perspective. The dot is the average, and so we're going to take while that chart looks at each and every single plan and investment option, we're going to start looking at you know, what does the world look like when we look at, say, just the active investment options? And that's, then we'll look at active just for, for let's just say, um, active advisor sold plans and its enrollment date. So we're, we're going we're gonna to start to take a look at some of the analysis. Um, it's a request that we had that, um, you know, no, no less than six or seven different organizations have asked me to, um, you know, you basically cover this and, and analyze the industry this way. So if you have some uh, thoughts and feedback, happy to set up a quick call and, and uh, learn more about what you perceive to be, what our methodology should be. We do have a, a pretty set methodology that we're working on right now. So it'll be interesting to see how that one you know plays out. The, the next item is the you know the industry from a product perspective. So uh, Virginia 510 launched the tuition track portfolio within the Invest 529 plan. That's the Drexel plan. It, it, that investment option within the Invest 529 plan is resident only. Um, there's a couple different bullet points that we have on it. It, it is a, and look, looking at some of the notes that, that was provided to me from, from various teams as well, it is a different sort of animal. The, the performance is tied to the average tuition at Virginia's public universities, fully a part of the Invest 529 portfolio lineup, provides downside protection similar to the um, FDIC insured portfolio. And once a year, the NAV is is reset to the average tuition, um, you know, which is used and it's repriced, um, you know, it's in that portfolio. But lo and behold, it's a it's an investment option that will track the public um, public schools and colleges within the state. So um, that's intriguing. And of course, it, it comes where I, I believe it was a year or two before that they had closed that the pre uh, prepaid plan. So they're kind of folding this type of investment option within the Invest 529 plan. So. We'll be watching that. Check Direct and change program managers from TIA um, over to Fidelity. Uh, Direct the Chet Advisor plan changed program managers from Hartford to Fidelity Advisors. South Dakota's College Access um, you know, changed as well from Allianz to, to Virtus Investment Partners. So congrats to them to you know for entering the space. And in the second quarter, perhaps the tail end of the second quarter or early um, early third quarter, we're, we're expecting Colorado's. Um, Scholars' choice to change program managers from Lake Mason to Nuveen. Um, and one total point that at some point in 2020 will be taking place is Macquarie Asset Management will acquire Wood Allen Reed, and, and the IV 529 plan is is set to um, shift, relabel, and, and and potentially change. It's 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 Delaware's um, Delaware's is going to be working with Ivy. Of course, Delaware's with Macquarie. Ivy's with Wood Allen Reed. So we'll be tracking that one closely as well. So but a lot going on in the space, which is great. Pivoting over to the ABLE side, we see that Alabama launched a new ABLE program to replace an ABLE savings plan. Uh, Nebraska will be shifting program management uh, duties over to um, you know the TrueLink Financial. I should correct my own self and say that it's actually in the ABLE space more of an administrator versus program ma manager terminology. So something I got, I got to keep top of mind as well. And we will mention uh, TrueLink again as as Ohio State will be changing uh, administrators from Intuition over to TrueLink as well. And for Able America, the um, American Funds uh, Able program will, will be adding the an advisory share class of Able F2. So we'll be tracking that one and, and keep uh, things posted. One thing that we've also noticed, in, in, you know, recently is really the expansion of the ESG investment options. There's currently, or very soon, will be 22 plans with ESG investment options. Um, there's been five. Five new ones, you know, basically from December to June of 2021. Um, all five of them are direct. There's currently roughly seven that are advisor sold plans with ESG investment options. But Florida added in December, Chet Direct added in February, in in May. So next month, Alaska 529 and T Row Price College Savings Plan will be adding their ESG plans. And in June, we're we're expecting Minnesota to add their ESG investment options. So. It's obviously something that's very timely. It's in the news. It's something that we're hearing pretty frequently. Not a day goes by where we're not seeing Fun Fire Ignites or any of the um, you know main industry publications you know talking about ESG. And of and of course, um, last week I saw Larry Fink for BlackRock you know present at one of their internal events where basically from their take you know ESG will be 
be standard practice as a means to even do the business uh, table stakes going forward in, in Europe and, and therefore potentially globally. So obviously something we'll be tracking closely and, and so it'll be interesting to, to see that one develop within the 529 space as well. You know, it, within the, the proc space, uh, in February, since it's launched re uh, Ready Save 529 mobile app, it's always great whenever there's new uh, product structure, product enhancement that, that hits the space. Uh, this one being uh, a census with Ready Save 529 mobile app. First, they, a census has launched it, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> in, in the chat box. Uh, but as, as of today, Missouri, most 529, Rhode Island, uh, College Bound Saver, and the Nev um, Nevada's SSGA, You Promise 529 plan are, are currently live, and they're going to be launching active uh, throughout the rest of their plans um, throughout 2021. And, and I guess I'll just uh, cover myself as well to say perhaps 2021, 2022, but you know in the near future they'll be rolling that across all the plans. Um, you know separately, it's great to see Arizona essay writing contest uh, was get was launched by state treasurer uh, Kimberly E as a part of a run up to 529 day. Of course, 529 day is on May 29th this year. It'll be on a weekend, so we'll see when when our month when our webinar is next month. But um, you know that that's great news, and, and we are aware that um, Edward Jones is going to be releasing their annual 529 awareness survey results fairly soon. So we'll be looking to see how how that fared for them this year, and obviously how it compared to, to years past. I know for us in the in the springtime, we we filled our our survey of, of parents, um, and what we we found was that broadly speaking, that um, you know with the overall you know fairly significant jump in, in savings rate. Um, me personally, I didn't think we would be touching the the over 10% savings rate um, again anytime soon, but we, we are there. It, it hasn't been back there since the 80s, really. Um, 60s, 70s, and 80s, the US savings rate was always at hovering that that 10 to 15% savings rate. So as, as more people save, um, overall, we've we've seen a 5% shift of, of percentage of parents that you know go from not being savers to savers. Um, four percent of, of that five percent has gone into saving, but not for college. Uh, saving, but not for the five two nine plan. One percent shifted from not saving to five two nine plan usage. And in the feedback two day, and we're still analyzing the figures. Is really just the the push for liquidity and that importance of, of liquidity. So, uh, we, like on the big picture, we see more people save, more people in turn saving for college, and more people using five two nine. So I think in due time, um, once the drive and push for liquidity kind of Calms down a little bit. We'll see even more folks uh, save with with five two nines. So, and and for our our survey of the as it relates to the to the study, what we really analyze is like how do you, how do you, how does one get and even accelerate that trend of getting people who aren't savers savers to savers, those that are saving without a five two nine to be, be a saver with five two nine and five two nine users to really become power users as we define as those that are either maxing out the annual contribution limit or using multiple ways to put in money into the account, whether it be themselves, their grandparents, the uh, employer channel, the gifting channel, and, and a couple different ways of just funding that overall um, you know, a, amount of money allotted for, for college. I'll take a quick look, quick pause, see if there's any questions that, that did come in um, during these sec sections. Um, quick note. Um, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Georgia, and California are all live on the app. So that's great news. So th thank you, Kevin, for the update. So we've seen already, going back to the slide, um, here about the, you know, with the census launching the, the Ready Save 529 mobile app, not only is it with Missouri, Rhode Island, Nevada, but it's also with Wisconsin, Minnesota, Georgia, and California uh, now as well. So thank you, Kevin. So uh, we're um, we're currently in the process of you know basically processing, gathering, processing, reporting, uh, QCing the the quarterly data for the five T nine plan industry. Lo and behold, it's it was a great uh, great quarter. We talked about the more people saving overall, more people saving with a five T nine plan. Fourteen point one million accounts roughly as of the end of the first quarter, and the assets have increased up to uh, uh, four hundred twelve billion. So we've seen. Uh, broadly speaking, the the increase in assets being driven on one hand by market performance, but we've also seen a, a fairly significant jump in um, net flows in the tune of, of roughly 17% increase when looking at the first quarter um, first quarter 2020 over to first quarter 2021. Um, 
you know, we've seen a, a, a sizable increase in, in uh, net flows, and that's being driven by the gross contributions increasing because there's more more money, you know, moving around. There's more savings. Perhaps it's, it's people aren't able to go out to restaurants, so they're uh, more apt to to save nowadays than perhaps in the past. So so we we see that that trend. Um, but also we see the um, you know gross distributions did dip a little bit in the fourth quarter 2020. There was a decrease in gross distributions, which which rarely takes place. And we we align that with the uh, decrease in, in college enrollment. But um, we do see positive news that, that the gross distributions did increase roughly 8% first quarter 2020 to first quarter 2021. So distributions are, are, are back in flow. And that's actually a, what I would interpret to be a, a positive thing, a good thing, um, as it means that people are, are back to um, using the um, using the, the 529 plans and, and saving and paying for college and using it for, for college. So uh, we'll, we'll be tracking the, you know, the industry and re reporting more as it comes in. My, my one last last note would be the, um, obviously the, the sheer importance of the automatic contributions with all the market volatility that being able to dollar cost on the way down and, <laughs> and also dollar cost on the way up was, was obviously a benefit for those um, that were able to do so. And when we look at ABLE, we've seen a very good, solid, continuous um, increase in number of accounts and, and assets. So um, number of accounts, we've gone slightly over that, that 90,000 accounts investing, that roughly 759 million in assets in, in ABLE accounts. And we've seen, you know, as we can kind of graphically see, it's been a very continuous increase in number of accounts. And we would almost see that acceleration of assets, um, you know, more closely aligning with the it being a fairly you know stable increase, but also that that market return really helping that that acceleration um, of compound growth. So we we'll be tracking that that able accounts. You know, broadly speaking, we, we see many of the same trends as as a as a um, you know paralleling other other great products in terms of people people like the product has launched. People are putting the money in. They're they're having it grow, and then they're taking uh, distributions for qualified expenses. So we've seen uh, able grow to date, and look forward to tracking it more. Now over to ETFs and 529s. So it, when we took a look at the ETFs and 529s, and, and there does seem to be a, a broadly speaking a growth and shifts, you know, from uh, mutual funds over to ETFs. A number of prop providers, you know, broadly speaking, have have been launching ETFs and moving some of the assets from 529 uh, from from mutual funds over to ETFs. So we'll be you know tracking that as as a happens and as as firms actually launch more and more investment options that are ETFs within the 529 structure, we'll be tracking and, and announcing that as well. We, we, we track that as in, our, in one of our status boards, but we did take a look at the demands from the demand perspective of parents and advisors, the offering perspective of 529 plans and the usage perspective in terms of that assets, accounts, gross sales, net sales and all that all that market data. Um, and of course, I say thank you because th this idea to, to, to review and analyze this topic really came in from you know, someone out in the field who just said, "Hey, Paul, what, what do you, what, what do you see going on in the space?" So that this chart really looks at a um, takes a look at our annual survey of, of parents. We do ask the question of how do you um, like when, when you when you choose between different five T nine plans, like like how important are different factors? And so it was a more of a select um, se select um, methodology in terms of the preference of 529 plans. And, and for this factor, we took a look at those that, that were saving with a 529 plan. How important was that offering of ETFs in terms of, of their plan selection? And broadly speaking, you know, from 2017, 18, 19, 20, we've been asking this, this question. And broadly speaking, for those with a 529 plan that did um, uh, sign up with the uh, either, either through their advisor or through recommendation through their advisor, Broadly speaking, has been um, you know an increase in terms of usage and preference for ETF, ETFs. I, I think it does align with overall ETFs becoming more and more known and aware of, of being a, a a an investment stru structure or like a you know they're basically like investment vehicle. So more and more people are familiar with it and used to it. So as the overall market kind of grows, so too in five T nine plans, there's been more and more you know demand. Uh, as can be seen, you know, for example, in 2017, there was a 15% rate. And in uh, 2020, there's, there's been 23% of, of 529 users that enrolled through advisors or, or with their advisor, you know, really chose their plan based on ETF. So we'll, we'll, be, we'll be tracking that as it develops. And when we take a look at a, um, you know, similar sort of survey going from uh, 2009 to 2020, asking advisors 
you know, the, the, that same question. We do a survey of advisors every single year in our, in our 510 distribution analysis. You know, broadly speaking, we've seen, you know, almost like different time periods. But that being said, there's been different stages and time periods where ETFs, you know, with advisors have has been on the rise. Obviously, for the last three years, more and more uh, demand for ETFs has been taking place. Um, so we'll, we'll be tracking that. And so it's, um, you know, going back in time, it was, it was sub, you know, sub, Five percent, even in terms of ETF, um, you know, selection, um, five, five to nine selection based on the ETF offering, and of course, this more recent year, you know, basically a forty-five percent of advisors, you know, responding. So we, we've seen an increase. When we look at the offering stage, um, you know, roughly fourteen plans are are offering two hundred and seventy-seven ETF investment options. Of course, I do also <laughs> note in this, as as in the past. If there's one investment option with five share classes, that's that would be five of those 200 and uh, 77 um, ETF investment options. You know, so, but broadly speaking, we, we have seen an increase in um, you know offering, and so that that's the list of plans that that currently offer the e ETF investment options. And, and for us in our methodology, it was really is the at the individual and static uh, investment option level is is it you know is the underlying investment in, in ETF. And then when we look at the age-based uh, investment option, which which may tend to have you know anywhere between ten or you know twenty thirty underlying investment options, we really you know flag those investment options. Is it um, you know using that 80, 80 20 rule? Is it more than eighty percent ETFs? You know, so it's not just you know you know twenty <laughs> twenty mutual funds and one ETF, and then that gets flagged to ETFs. Like no, it needs to be. Um, you know that that over twenty percent uh, ETF investment underlier. So, you know that that being said, you know so five percent of of the five two nine investment options available are, are ETF investment options. We'll, we'll continue to track it. Obviously, it's um it's one of our status boards and something that we we were asked to take a look at. We we did we evaluated it. Um, you know, and so based on on feedback, we we took a look and and so thank you for for the suggestion to to take a look on that one. So. Much appreciated. And then, oh yeah, of course, I, I did forget to mention that the last stage of the utilization. So th this chart really looks at the at the broader overall assets within uh, ETFs across the entire financial service industry. Um, as of the end of 2020, 5.5 trillion in assets were were in ETFs. This is um you know for for this this chart it you know for ETFs and um, mutual funds it. it it um, in includes ETFs, it includes mutual funds, it, it, it excludes closed end funds um, and money market funds. So it really is the, the longer term investment, non um, non money market. So, but lo, lo and behold, twenty um, I'm sorry, five point five uh, trillion in assets in ETFs out of the total of twenty three trillion in mutual funds and um, and ETFs as of twenty twenty were was sort of like the the usage rate so so closer to that 23.5% of of long term assets were were in ETFs when we look at the 529 side it's only 1.5% of assets 3.7% uh, of investment positions um 3.8% of net flows and 2.3% of gross sales um they, lo, lo and behold is it one can see the divergence between the overall market that is much more um that is using ETFs at a much higher clip than than uh, nine plans. So, um, lo and behold, it's I, I think as they become much more mainstream, that you know they will be um, people will become much more familiar with them, and therefore the offering and therefore demand as well will, will broadly increase for ETFs going forward. So we'll we'll, we'll be tracking it, and uh, thank you for the feedback. <clears throat> Yep, that pretty much summarizes the, the last one. You know, d demand perspective. You know, parents and, and advisors are, are demanding. There's more and more plans offering it. The, the usage uh, gap exists between five Q nines and the overall market. Um, yeah, they didn't expect to be be filled accordingly over time. So, time will tell, and we'll be tracking it. We'll pause for a moment for any questions, and I'll just see if anyone uh, types in in a question. Let's give it one moment.
Uh, two quick questions. Like one is the around the Able Age Adjustment Act. What is the likelihood of of it uh, getting passed? We, you know, broadly speaking, we we we've, we've seen bills get introduced in both the uh, House side and the Senate side. You know, great traction to date. So. Um, and it seems like almost every every week when I do cover the topic in, in our 529 Dashy newsletter that it is getting more and more co-sponsors. And, um, you know, obviously that momentum is is very positive. The other question is is an update on the employer channel. Obviously, there's, um, we, well, you know, based on our plan advisor research, roughly 8 to 10 percent of, of uh, corporations are currently offering 529 plans, whether that be a direct deposit option or a matching type of program, as the CARES Act did provide benefits to the student loan debt uh, repayment side of the of the uh, conversation. We do expect that as companies get more and more focused about adding in the um, you know like student loan debt um, benefit, that we do expect that, that to kind of pinwheel over to the savings side as well. So time will tell, but I I think this may be the year where we get some some momentum and traction. And obviously, as there's a lot of legislation being hit around the retooling of America and the focus on the employer channel, we'll see more and more. So we do have a question on the, uh, do we do we classify the Virginia uh, tuition track product as a prepaid or savings? Th th thank you, Rich. Um, you know, on, on that question, um, I the plan itself, Virginia 529 does, um, you know, classify it as a savings, uh, it, as a, as a, as an investment option within the savings plan, so it's it's not a standalone plan. It's a, it, it's a track within the the savings portfolio and in, in, inside Invest Five Two Nine plan. It does have a have a lot of look and feel as a prepaid investment option. Obviously, the state did close their prepaid plan last year, the year before, I, I think, and relaunched this investment option only for uh, Virginia residents. So I. It has a lot of look and feel as a prepaid plan, but lo and behold, at the end of the day, it is a savings plan. It is a it is a an investment option within the savings plan, and the return performance does um, you know is much more of a inflation tracker as it relates to uh, the Virginia public college uh, tuition rates. So we'll, we'll be tracking that one. And thank you, Rich. Great question. Any trends you see on how asset managers are changing their approach to supporting advisors on 529s and financial aid? And um, you know, great question. I, I I think that we're we're seeing the, the rotation of of a lot of different things of of that you know traditional you know wholesale route to that to the hybrids and obviously as as the you know various kind of markets reopen, we'll see more and more people you know going back and, and walking, tackling, and, and having meetings um, in person. I do see think that financial aid continues to be a, a a fairly large topic. There was the the um you know different legislation that that was talked about that would impact you know the financial aid topic. Very very timely. Thank you, Joseph, for the question. Um, I think a lot of the actual you know while the intention has been um you know has been stated, the actual implementation and the rules and the regs and the the and the details is still waiting to be seen. So. It, it's, it continues to be a, a large topic of, of conversation. We'll, we'll be watching it, and, and, and frankly, I, I think the asset managers have a lot of you know huge opportunities to to do that outreach to advisors as it relates to, to five two nine plans and college financial planning and that financial aid side. I, I will also note, you know, broadly speaking, um, you know, as as that um, you know as it relates to the to the higher net worth, that cap gains uh, tax rate may actually you know uh, be broadly speaking, as as some believe, actually. A, a, you know, maybe a net positive for five nine plans, just because it's, you know, it does have the, the tax advantages and things of that, of that nature. So I, I would expect there to be more conversations on that. But you know, lo, lo and behold, I, I think that if, if anything, asset managers have realized that it's a long, um, it, it's a long term goal to help families pay for, you know, saving pay for long term goals. Um, you know, as it relates to you know college financial planning and retirement planning, that it's like the that long-term goal also helped a lot of those families actually stay invested in the marketplace through 2020, um, not selling in, in April 2020, because it's, you know, lo and behold, for those with five-year-olds, it's a 13-year window um, until the, that usage period. So I, I, I think that the um, opportunity continues for asset managers to have that conversation. It, it continues to be very sticky assets um, in terms of just helping advisors, um, you know, to help, help their own clients. So I, I think I think there there continues to be a lot of different opportunities that a lot of different um, 
you know, marketing pages, you know, you do, you know, could probably help out the the market more uh, within five nines and financial aid. So, so more more to be seen. And you know, Joseph, when I see you out in Denver, will be will be that'll be our first topic of discussion. Uh, at, you know, you know, having uh when we have our coffee at, at the Brown Hotel. So, thank you very much. Um, just pause for a second, see if there's any last minute questions. Uh, there's the disclosure that's uh, as as asked by by our company. Thank you so much for your time and please provide the feedback and help your clients save and save efficiently. Hope you have a great day. Thank you.